Hello everybody, I'm Karara and welcome to another video. You guys know what time it is, it's another Musical Walkthrough Silver Edition. Today we're going to be tackling the 2016 December Contest Silver Problem Moocast. Farmer John's and cows and less than or equal to 200 want to organize an emergency Moocast system for broadcasting important messages among themselves. Instead of mooing at each other over long distances, the cows decide to equip themselves with walkie-talkies, one for each cow. These walkie-talkies each have a limited transmission radius, a walkie-talkie with power P can only transmit to other cows up to a distance of P away. Note that cow A might be able to transmit to cow B even if cow B can't transmit back. How sad. Due to cow A's power being larger than that of cow B. Fortunately, cows can relay messages to one another along a path consisting of several hops, so it is not necessary for every cow to be able to transmit directly to every other cow. Due to the asymmetrical nature of walkie-talkie transmission, Broadcasts from some cows may be more effective than other cows in their ability to reach large numbers of recipients, taking relaying into account. Please help the cows determine the maximum number of cows that can be reached by a broadcast originating from a single cow. And time for the input format, file moocast.in. The first line of input contains n. The next n lines each contain the x and y coordinates of a single cow followed by p, the power of the walkie-talkie held by this cow. Output format. Write a single line of output containing the maximum number of cows a broadcast from a single cow can reach. The originating cow is included in this number. So basically what we want to do is we want to take a bunch of cows, their powers, and see how many cows one cow can reach by broadcasting from his walkie-talkie. Alright, seems not too bad. So here's the sample input, there's the sample output. And now let's go to the drawing board so we can figure this boy out. Alrighty, so let's draw out our input so that we can figure out what we got to do. So we got four lonely cows that want to talk to each other. One's at like 1 comma 3, the other is at 5 4 which is 4 this way and 1 up. And then we have one at 7 2 which is down 2 and over 1, over 2. Then we have one at 6 1 which is here. And then this boy over here has a power of 1. So he gets so, so lonely that he can't even reach his boy of 7 2. And this guy also can't even reach the boy at 6'2". So these are the two lonely cows, no friends. We also have these cows over here. So could this one reach anybody else? So 5'4", 1, 4, okay that's way out of range 3. What about to the 7? 2, 2, that's also 2 root 2? Huh, wait, yeah, okay, so this one could reach. So it could go to this cow, but it can't go to that cow. And then this cow... Could it reach everything else? What's the square root? What's the distance between 5, 4, and 1, 3? 4.123, so yes, it can reach. Eh, I know it should be circled, but we're not sophisticated human beings. Let's just draw an oval. We get the idea. It could only reach this one, right? Wait, actually, could it reach anything else? Five, okay, it can't reach that one, it can't reach that one. Okay, so we're good. Our oval is beautiful, and it's perfect, and we don't have to worry about it. Now, what we want to do is we want to take the maximum number of cows that a broadcast from a single cow can reach. So if we take it from this cow, it can't reach anybody because this guy's a loner. Same from this one, but this guy could reach this one and nothing else. Yeah, unfortunate. This one can reach this one, and then which can reach that one. So the maximum is 3 as a sample output, so correctly states. So how do we actually implement an algorithm for this? Well, this kind of reminds me of a directed graph because, like, there's an imaginary edge connecting this one. Ah, uh, can't draw edges. There's an imaginary edge connecting this one and this one, and the length is basically what? The length is just the length between these two points, which we found was like 4.12. All right. And then there's also an imaginary edge here because you get from this cow to that cow, and the length is like the root of 2 squared plus 2 squared which is just 2 root 2. And we have this, and we basically want to find the maximum number of cows that a path like this can contain. And we saw the answer of 3 because we basically take this path. 1, 2, 3. So, how do we actually compute this with an algorithm? That is the question. Huh, this input seems kind of simple to figure that out. What happens if we made all these edges, and then what we did was go through each cow and then run Dijkstra's on it. Huh. Oh, we don't even need to write Dijkstra. We could just run BFS because we want to see how many cows we could get to. Wait, that could be pretty good. What I'm proposing is what we do is we basically run BFS from every single cow and find out how many cows we can get to. 
Let's make this a little bit more complicated because this input is so simple that I'm going to throw up. So let's say that we have another cow over here, another cow over there, another cow over there. Then there's uh, imaginary and then wait, powers. This boy can't reach anyone else, the loner over here. This guy could reach over there, and then this guy can't reach anybody else. This cow could reach this cow, so there's an edge going that way. This cow could reach over there, so there's an edge going that way. This cow cannot reach over there, but this cow can reach over there. So there's an edge going that way, and then this cow could reach that one. So we go that way. Cool. So now that we have this beautiful diagram, as you can see, masterpiece, we can basically say that we run BFS from every cow. So we try to run BFS from every cow. We look at this cow, we add one, we check all its neighbors, no neighbors. So we're done with BFS on this cow, and we only had one. For this one, we start with one, but it has no neighbors because there's no edges coming out of it. So one again. Go to this boy. Look at his neighbors. Two neighbors. So we go to this one. We add one. Go to this one. Add one. Go to this one. Add one. And we have three. But then, if we go to this one, we go add one for this one. Go to that one. Add 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 one. And we got five whole... No, I know how to count. Six whole cows that we reach. I think this is a pretty good algorithm. Let's write up the pseudocode because I haven't been doing that lately. And I think that C++ is not a very generalizable language. So let's write some stuff in text edit, the best text editor. Alrighty, so we first read in our inputs and then go through every pair of cows and make an edge, a directed edge, if a cow can reach another cow. And then once we went through every pair and made a directed edge of every other cow could reach another cow, then we basically just run BFS on every single cow, count how many cows we reach, and then take the max of all that. So for every cow, run BFS and count how many cows visited, then keep track of the maximum number of cows visited. So let's make sure that we don't run out of time here, because I hate running out of time, and then we gotta redo the whole algorithm, and that sucks. So, first step, read an input. Takes n time. Go through every pair of cows. Takes n squared time. For every cow, n. Run BFS. Another n. So n squared. So basically our whole thing runs in n squared time and we only have 200 cows. So this shouldn't be bad at all. 200 times 200, 40,000, not bad at all. So I think we have an algorithm. Let's get into the code. Finally, we got our code ready to go. So first thing first, include our stuff. Now that we have our reading stuff, we now have to make sure that we keep track of our variables. First thing first, int n. And then we gotta keep track of all our other variables, like x, y, and p. So we could do a pair int int array to store x, y. Let's do that real quick. Coordinates. Oh, it's an array, so let's make it 400 just to be safe. And then we also got to do p. So int p 400 again. Noise. Now let's read everything in. C in and for int and it up oh, up oh, can't use n i equals zero i less than n i plus one in a for loop we got a c in our coordinates i dot first coordinates i dot second and p so now that we have all our input read in we're ready to get to the op algorithm that we devised let's do it for int i equals zero i less than n i zero i less than n i plus plus and then we want to do it for every pair, I know how to speak English, for every pair, int j is equal to i plus 1, j less than n, j plus plus. So what we got to do is we got to look at this pair of clouds, see if they can reach each other, and then add a directed edge depending on whether they can reach each other or not. Oh yeah, first things first, got to keep a place to store all the directed edges, and I like to do that with something called an adjacency list, which is basically a vector of ints that are adjacent to a cow i. So we do a vector int add and then what we do is we do an array so that each cow has a list of which cows are adjacent to it. Gotta make sure we include our vector over here. So let's first compute the square of the distance. I will write it out real quick. Hopefully you guys know the distance formula because that's important on all the geometry problems that you're going to see in use. So basically we know that if the distance squared is greater than the power squared then the cows can't reach each other. Or sorry, the one cow can't reach the other cow. But it's possible that the other cow can reach the other cow. If dst is greater, sorry, less than power of i, then what we do is we add to i the adjacency list. Because basically this means that the distance is squared is less than, oh, got the square power. So basically what this is saying is that if the distance is less than the square of the power, that means that 
Cal I can reach Cal J. So what we got to do is add J to the adjacency list of I. So we do add I dot push back J. And then we do the same thing for J. If J could reach I, then we add the directed edge for that too. All right, so what we got now is we got our adjacency list. We got our nice little grid that we had over here. And now what we want to do is run BFS on all these boys. So for every cow, what we got to do is we got to run BFS. And to do BFS, we're going to use something called a queue. A queue basically takes stuff in and poops out the first thing that it got. So if I add a 1, then a 2, then a 3, and we take stuff out, it'll first take out a 1, then it'll take out a 2, then it'll take out a 3. So this is really useful for BFS because we take out something, we add all its neighbors, and then take out stuff from the queue until we get to the end. So let's implement that. So queue int, got to include queue, let's do that. Queue is equal to queue int queue. Q dot push our first cow, which is I, and then while not Q dot empty, we keep going. So basically, while the Q has more cows to look at, we're going to keep looking at those cows because we love those cows. Int car is equal to Q dot top front, and that gives us the first element, and then we want to get rid of the first element because we already stored it, so Q dot pop, and then what we got to do is we got to check whether it has neighbors and add them to the queue. Thankfully, we planned for this and we added them all to an adjacency list. So all we had to do is loop through the neighbors in the adjacency list. So for each neighbor, we just add them to the queue. But wait, we forgot one important thing. And when you're doing BFS, you should always have an array of visited. So basically what that does is that makes sure that you don't visit the same cow multiple times. Bool visited is a 400 array. And then before we do our BFS, we should set everything to zero because if you make an array locally, it does really sketchy stuff and it doesn't set everything to zero. So make sure you set everything to zero. All right, so we set everything in our visitor array to, oh yeah, it's a Boolean array, I'm forgetting. It's false, we set everything to false. So that basically means we haven't seen any cows yet. What a sad way to live, seeing no cows. So if we haven't visited J, if not visited J, we add it to the queue. We do Q dot push J, and then we mark it as visited. Visited J is equal to true. And then we also had to make sure we keep track of how many cows we visited. So we basically do in total equals zero. Because every time we pull it out of the queue, we're going to add one. And we haven't pulled out the first cow yet. Over here, we do tot plus plus. And remember in our algorithm that we wanted to have the overall max. So what we're going to do is we're going to have an int max e is equal to zero. And we can't have less than zero because you can't have a negative number of cows. I mean, I wish we could, but unfortunately not. And then over here, once we go through our BFS, we basically do max e is equal to max of max e and top. And that basically keeps track of the maximum total that we got in all our BFSs. And all we got to do at the end is see out our max e. Cool, we'd be done, I think. Hopefully, let's test it out. A nice three, that's what we want. Hopefully, the cows are happy with this. Let's see. Oh, don't want to break my keyboard. And before we submit, let's make sure that we change everything to fins. Oh, 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 will it work, will it work, ah, no, oh, I hate it when it works on the test case, but nothing else, okay, let us see what's wrong, so let's debug this guy, I added a breakpoint over here, so that we can see our adjacency list when it's done computing, okay, let's check out our adjacency list, let's see, so we only have two edges, was that what we had, yeah, we only had two edges over in our first diagram, so is this right, so our zero with Cal, the guy with five, oh yeah, the guy with five, should have one edge, which makes sense. And then a second guy with three should also have one edge. Which... Okay, so our agency list is right. Let's keep going through this and see what's happening. I don't see what could possibly be wrong. Okay, let's just make sure that all our indexes are correct. So our i, it should be pushing i because we want to start from i. We do want to do adjacent current because we want to do all the current. Oh, 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 huh. So we never marked that visited i was true, so it might just keep infinitely looping to visit i, but I don't think that's a problem. Um, let's, but that is a problem for sure, so let's set that to true. And let us try back to f out and submit again. Very legit. A. We did it. Nice. A. We made the cows happy. Now they're no longer loner. They could talk to each other. Cool. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I did this problem for the first time and I think it was a pretty interesting problem because it made us do two steps. First, we had to generate an adjacency matrix that was not essentially trivial, but... And then after that, we also had to run BFS on every single node. What makes this problem kind of easy is that N is only 200, so you don't have to think much about it. You can just brute force it immediately. 
I am sure that there's a harder version in gold if you want to check that out. But thanks again for watching. I hope you guys learned something. And if you guys want me to do this in the future, just let me know down in the comments. If you guys enjoyed the content, then hit the like button and subscribe for more. Thank you guys so much for watching, and Karar out.